Hey everyone, Sir Termo here again. And today I'm bringing you some Ash LeBlanc fun. Now, you might have been looking at stats and some websites that have been recommending Ash LeBlanc over the past week or so. And that's because this deck does really, really, really well into Bane decks. It's really hard for Bane to actually be able to beat the Ash LeBlanc because you have all the freezes and you have all the troll chance to, to actually trade into the units. However, for as good of a win rate that he has against Bane, he has just the opposite against Seraphine decks. So you're literally almost losing against every single Seraphine variant because he just has so many ways to deal with your units. And most of your units have like low HP, like the Blank and Ash don't really have a ton of HP. And, and obviously your glow, your glow sticker as well. So it's very easy for them to have like Misty Shock or anything else to just give it your units right on the back. So on one stream, you destroy Bane decks. On the other stream, you lose to Seraphine decks. Uh, and that's the story with this deck and why I think it's much better as a tournament deck or, or a gauntlet deck than it is as a ladder deck. But regardless of that, let's actually kind of go over how this deck works. Because there is a couple of new tools that were released in the most recent expansion that make the cut in this deck list. So we do play one Brutal Steel, you know, just a nice one-off to be able to synergize cheap freeze. Because why not? Triple Ice Spell Archer allows you, allows you to level up your Ash as well as synergize with the Glory Seeker or be able to stop the opponent's attack. Triple Hook Master is there to enable Unforgiving Call. So Unforgiving Call is the card that I'm gonna discuss later that I think is very critical in this deck that allows you to win those matchups against Bane. So the Hook Master is a decent unit by itself as well, right? You can get some weapons like the Scout, which work really well with Ash or LeBlanc. So, you know, why not? Triple Glory Seeker, standard in this type of deck, can enable your reputation and lets you kill a unit while being able to freeze it with Ash. Triple Troll Shen, again, we are trying to beat those Demacia decks, so the Troll Shen allows me to get favorable trades in different areas. I like the Triple Trapper, it's a nice blocker, it's a 3-3 and gives me access to the Yeti, and a 5-5 is also very difficult for those Demacia or combat oriented decks to deal with. A new card that I put in this deck is Brutal Skirmish. I sounded like a broken record, but we're literally trying to just tu turbo target Bane decks. So the Brutal Skirmish lets us do exactly that by being able to destroy whatever equipment they put into one of their units and then still be able to strike that unit. This actually ends up being like a another, it's kind of like another calling strike, right? Because even if you even if the opponent doesn't have an equipment, you can still strike, right? So if, if you're trying to do like a freeze into calling strike, this is the same way you can do freeze into Brutal Skirmish and say that you actually get the reputation trigger because both your units are striking each other. But of course, we are still playing double calling strike in the rare occasions that you are going to run into the Seraphine. You can play this into them. Uh, but obviously, you also can kill your Bane too since Bane only has three powers. So nice, nice little nice way to kill her. Double flash freeze to kind of complement. The reason I have more flash freeze than Brutal Steel is because Bane has four HP. So obviously the British still doesn't hit the pain while the flash freeze does. Now we get to our champions. And the black is the standard for this deck. Uh, in a world where you're always banning the PNC decks, like the Seraphine decks, in like a best of three format, then the black can survive against most of the decks out there, even with her two HP. And obviously the idea is that if you can level up the black, then you can do the mirror image to be able to potentially get multiple rallies off of the tactician. Ash can be one of your alternate win conditions, allowing you to just freeze the opponent's board and be able to stop them from being blockers and attack and win the game. Uh, so Ash ends up being really cool there. Uh, then Combat Cook is kind of similar to the Hookmaster, is there to enable an unforgiving call. Uh, however, Combat Cook is also a really good unit by itself because they, the weapon that he improvises is going to be Forge. Usually the Combat Cook gets to pad power right away and can work as a reputation trigger. And then we got to what I think is the signature part of this deck map, and that's the Unforgiving Cult. For four mana, we pretty much have a Harsh Wind, a set that is even better than Harsh Wind, because imagine you're going against like a big Rumble or a big Lee Sin that has Spell Shield, the Unforgiving Cult will be able to get through the Spell Shield and actually still freeze the, their unit, while Harsh Winds does not. And that's the reason why we're playing the Weapon Masters in this deck, just to enable this, and obviously this ends up working out really well as well, uh, to level up your Ash really quickly, because it's going to be 2 out of 4 to level up Ash. And then we have our draw. So Assessor and Whisper Words are really good to, tri to trigger the synergies with our reputation and a 5 power units so that we actually don't run our resources too much. And then lastly, Tactician. Tactician is there as a finisher with the rallies, get synergized with the mirror image 
can put a lot of pressure into slower decks. So that's that's a full deck. Again, new tools there with Skirmish and Unforgiving Cole, as well as the Weapon Masters, that make this deck kind of interesting to revisit again. So hope you enjoyed the games coming up today. Uh, it's it's kind of weird, right? We we reach masters yesterday's video, and in today's video, what I was recording, I felt like I was running into all the low master players because. I play against some interesting decks as you see in the games coming up soon. But anyways, remember if you like the content, you like the video below, subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. I'll see you at the end of the video for some more tips. In this match, we're going against Nora Seraphine. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh I think Whisper Wars is too greedy. I think I like the Hookmaster, I like the LeBlanc. Even second, the black is not bad, right? Reputation, uh, the sigil can kill the Nora. Unforgiving Call is probably useless though in this matchup, right? Triple Unforgiving Call, the whole purpose of it is really more for the Bane matchups. Bane, Bane, no Bane, Bane, Bane. Mm, Troll Shens are too many. Okay, Scout, Scout is amazing. Because the scout with LeBlanc is going to be naughty. Scout with LeBlanc is going to be actually crazy. Like, actually crazy. Cool. You want to take 4 damage? Group shot. Okay, I was going to say, you want to take 4 damage? Really? So, we can now play LeBlanc onto turn 4. So that we have enough mana with Trollshan to save her. But the problem here is that if we play the Hookmaster, we tap out. Okay, well, opponent just gave it to us. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so opponent could technically have, I guess, double Mystic. And that could be enough to kill our LeBlanc here. Drop the bomb. Alright, so you have a Mystic now or a Seraphine spell. The Seraphine High Note. That could be a problem. So it has to be Mystic or the High Note. Otherwise, the Black is pushing two Reputation Triggers already. Okay. And about to level up on her next attack. Now, the opponent does have three portals, which is a little bit annoying. And draws all three. Wow. Draws all three. Okay. All right, so you're going to let me get this attack? You sure about that? I mean, sorry, you're going to let me level up LeBlanc here for free. All right. I'll take the level up LeBlanc. I'll take the level up LeBlanc. Not ideal. Taking this much damage is not ideal. But because we have the Unforgiving Call, I'm also not too afraid of it. Hmm, no matter which one I play, it's gonna just lose to this big guy here. So let's go for the Pot of Pain. Uh, here comes the opponent's... Yeah, there we go. We go like this. Maybe we should just let them kill that LeBlanc, to be honest. Yeah, maybe letting, maybe letting them kill that LeBlanc was probably better. I want to put a lot of pressure on them, but at the same time, I feel like the Shepard Chateau might be a little bit too greedy. Um, Jack said be contenders out here. I can't believe they got all three portals at once, though. The Seraphine gets a spell. Can attack here. Okay, get stay all the one right away, too. Are you kidding me? Now, they could kill this LeBlanc now. But then we play the second one. Otherwise, I would love... Okay, so they're drawing. They're digging. They're digging for it. We're just going to tap them out. Doesn't have it. I'm not afraid. We just hit Reputation 2. So, we can actually kill... One of their units. We can even go here, copy this, a perfect puppet. so that we can just pull 
this and this. Let them have the Nora. I think I'm okay with them having Nora. I just want to make sure that my units don't die to the volunteer Elna. I think we kill the Seraphine. Okay, so they went for the Thermal. The problem with this is that now we cannot kill Seraphine. Oh no, we still can. Never mind. What am I talking about? So now, because the opponent did this, okay, so. Is it, is it better to play the Sigil of Malice or is it better to keep LeBlanc? I think it's better to keep LeBlanc. Absolutely better to keep LeBlanc, right? We just kill here. We kill here. We attack like this. We still keep this as a blocker. Yes, I think this is fine, right? Let's kill the Nora now so that she doesn't so that the opponent doesn't get more portals. If they wanna kill if they wanna block with the Elna, that's okay with me. I don't mind trading. This can kill the Battlecaster, and we also have the Unforgiving Call to save them if anything. We play LeBlanc and give the scout again and just push damage that way. Nope, because the opponent gets a second Seraphine, huh? That's why they didn't care about losing the first one. Because they always had the second one. Our hand is Aqua. And they get to draw four cards. So any advantage that we had, we just lost it. Any advantage that we had, we just lost it. Hmm. Because it's so easy for them to just kill our LeBlanc. Okay, so they're just gonna summon blockers after blockers then. So it's gonna have to be Unforgiving Call and potentially Brutal Steel. They discarded the Starborn, which is what they got randomly from Seraphine. So they're trying to push 6 damage with the Poros, potentially 8. The Unforgiving Call is gonna freeze this too, it doesn't freeze the Daring Poros. So no matter what, we are taking quite a bit of damage. Yeah, no matter what, we're taking quite a bit of damage. So we can go like this. Here. And we can go here. We don't really want to lose that much HP against a Seraphine that's leveled up. But once again, it's, it's kind of doomed, right? But it's still at 13. Unless we top deck Ash. I don't even think we actually call and strike the Seraphine. Maybe we should have, right? But if opponent has something at burst speed, they're always gonna do it. Hmm. I need, I need, I need, I need the rally. I need, I really need a whisper words. I really need a whisper words for us to really have a chance. With eight mana, I don't see anything that we can do here. Maybe because I feel like I need to keep the calling strike. To actually be able to kill like the other stuff. We can try to copy the LeBlanc now. Or copy the Hookmaster. N neither of which really matters. Because this doesn't copy the weapon, right? So copying the LeBlanc is decent because we're going to get another mirror image back. At least he's forcing the opponent to have to react. I'm so scared of that Seraphine, though. So, we have already triggered 15, so this is going to be 7, 11, 17. So, there's no way for me to get more than one mirror image out of this. But the idea is just to try to push damage. Now, we could have gone for the Pot of Pain, but I think I need to keep the Culling Strike mana open. If opponent is blocking with their elusives, then I am willing to commit the Calling Strike on the Seraphine. If they keep blocking like this, then I, I think I am willing to commit the Calling Strike on the Seraphine. Because by committing the Calling Strike on the Seraphine, we also make sure that... Hmm. Like, do you really have no spells that you can use with Seraphine here? No way, right? Now, opponent already showed us that they played the Poro Cannon, so they could easily just have another Poro Cannon just waiting. 
Nora. By hook or by crook, I'll find you, dear cat. So Nora gets frozen. No, that's not true. Seraphim gets frozen. So we definitely commit this here. We, des we definitely commit this here and just freeze both of them. Stop the fair Seraphim from getting any more value. That's two Seraphim's gone. Oh, never mind. They get the heroic refrain. But I'm okay with that. So that's one less heroic refrain for Leto. Like, it wasn't that better to keep that for Leto? Because that was that would have been your way to do Leto. Now, we still take one damage from the Poro. This gets frozen. You have two cards. This gets frozen. Everything gets frozen. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna force you to have something else. Okay, that grows it to three, so we go down to one, and if the opponent gets, if we get a shroom, we lose the game. The darkness deals two to the blank, so the blank will die. I mean, she's, sorry, it deals four to the blank, so the blank will die. Doesn't do the darkness on the LeBlanc right away. My uh, do I get? Do I just go for another copy of LeBlanc first then? No, I think we just go for the scout attack. Get a blocker out of the way. No way, right? Hmm. Can't do it like that, right? So my problem here is that we don't have a blocker. But yes we do, because we can go here. So we can go here. Seeing double. And play this this weapon here. Because this one I, I want this one to survive. We're gonna kill the Nora, obviously. We don't want to kill this construct, but the opponent is going to save it anyways. Yeah, we don't want to kill the construct, but I don't think we have a choice. So we don't have a choice but to kill the construct. Because the opponent can just block. And if they get, if they get, the, if they actually get the portal, they have two portals. So if they actually get any of the two portals, they win the game. Unless we top deck another freeze. Please don't get a portal. Doesn't get it. No. <laughs> oh, it was just a matter of time. Wow. I just got baited by the opponent not getting the portal. I even drew another blocker. GG's. In this matchup, we're going against Lysandra PNC. So is this timelines or what is this? What am I playing against? I don't think I need the Unforgiving Code, whatever that is. Whatever this 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 combination of champions is. Yeah, I think it I think it has to be, right? It has to be trying to get the watcher out. Maybe this is Jetty's, right? So it might be Jetty's. So the Unforgiving Code might actually not be bad. It might be Jetty's copying the Jetty's. Yes, it is. There we go. So it is Jetty's. Alright, so it's Jetty's. Uh he's gonna copy the Jetty's, allow him to be able to, you know, cheat out the big unit. So, pretty interesting. Scott is not bad. Scott is not bad if I get a LeBlanc. Like, if I get a LeBlanc or an Ash, the Scott is kind of premium, right? Opponent actually doesn't want to block with the Jetty Jeerling. Because then they don't have they don't have their Jetties on the field to enable the rest of their cards. So, there is a free 2 damage here as well. <laughs> so they're gonna commit they're gonna do it by committing the troll shan. Okay. So he's desperately trying to keep this Jerry alive. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna actually glory seeker and commit our own troll troll shan to actually kill him. Yeah. Before the opponent can cheat out their big unit. Now if the opponent has a second troll shan, 
then I'm in trouble. So here's a question. Do I actually play the Trollshan here? I think I absolutely do. I think I absolutely play the Trollshan here. Stop the opponent from having two Jetties and be able to cheat out the A-cost Jetty. This also obviously cancels reputation, so the more reputation we have, the better. Uh, Babbling Jerk, okay. Babbling Jerk, all right, all right. We can play Hookmaster, the opponent has no way. I like the extra mana, but a quick attack is premium here, right? Because we can transfer over. We can transfer over the quick attack by putting the scout on the Hookmaster. Or the opponent just gives it to us. And I'm gonna block here. I don't want the opponent to have the jetties. The way that the opponent beats us is by having the jetties in their in their in their field. Now they are gonna they do have multiple jetties now and they potentially drew another jetty there. Oh they got the thermal. Okay, so they got the thermal. Good for them. Gets to kill our merciless hunter. Our not merciless, Trafarian, right? But here's what we talked about, right? Rake with LeBlanc. This is kind of premium. I'm gonna force the opponent to have another Trollshan or have the freeze if they wanna kill this. All right, so just like that, reputation is gonna be almost completed. And in addition to that, there's no way, if you had the Trollshan, you would have played already, right? Oh, okay, he's just trying to draw more Jetty. So, we know that the opponent has a unit that has five more power, so it's definitely a Jedi that they have in their hand. We can call and strike the Lysandra before she levels up, right? To prevent us from losing to the Watcher. We could also play the quick attack here, making it so the opponent cannot attack with any of their units without losing to the Trapper. If opponent has a second enraged jetty, they could technically summon the jet the abominable jetties this turn, but they don't have it. So here's what's gonna happen now. LeBlanc is gonna level up. We're gonna have the tactician enable, because we have just trigger reputation from LeBlanc having scout. And, and and notice how careful I'm being about how I attack, right? I'm being really careful about how I attack. Uh, and getting rid of the jetties so that the opponent doesn't have the value to actually be able to trigger the jetties. So we attack again. Force the opponent to have it. They have the freeze. Okay, so they have the freeze. So here's where we do the unforgiving call. Do we even want to? I think so, right? Here's where we do the Unforgiving Call. Let's us get the tray. We know that the opponent is going to get another three sisters eventually. I don't even think I care about Lysandra. Honestly, I don't even think I care about Lysandra. I think I care about, kill about killing this Jetty. If the opponent has no Jetties in the field, they cannot summon the Abominable that they have in their hand. I guess they could summon it right now, but... <laughs> they could summon it right now, just straight up. But that's not really helping them do much. So now... Opponent is back to being in a bad spot because we can play tactician. Um, we can play tactician. We attack with LeBlanc. LeBlanc is gonna discount this. We can attack with tactician again, right? We can duplicate the tacticians. <laughs> oh, they killed! They took our thermal. They took our thermal. So. I like the scout. I like the scout. Opponent doesn't have any good blockers for this. Like for the testation having scout. And we can always copy a next turn instead. Take advantage of the fact that the opponent literally has no blockers here. This is pushing 11. The scout attack opens, forcing him to block with Lissandra again. The only downside is that we might lose the tactician here. Here we go. So they have they are forced to block with Lissandra. Boom. So they're forced to block with Lysandra. And we've just been keeping their jetties 
away from them, right? So that's really been the big deal that has been stopping them from doing anything. We can play Hookmaster here to have the... As long as we're wide enough, it should be fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's draw more let's draw more units. I'm gonna make sure I don't lose to like any random troll shan or anything like that. And there we go. Like the fact that they, the fact that they had they had he hadn't surrendered yet told me that maybe he had an out. Maybe he had like you know troll shan. We knew he probably had a freeze, but we killed the jetties and we're in a good spot. So GG's. In this matchup, we're gonna get Swain Misfortune. This is really bad, because usually we don't do very well against aggro. Hmm. Like, do I need to keep the glory seeker just so that I can trade? Might have to. Might have to keep the glory seeker just so that I can trade some stuff? Okay, that's a good draw. So this is a good draw to kind of help us stabilize. So this is a great draw to help us stabilize. Um... Maybe we don't care about the Glory Seeker anymore. Uh, although, if the opponent develops here, I think I'll go ahead and commit the Glory Seeker anyways. Otherwise, we can just call and strike the Misfortune and have the Trapper to block. Okay, well... Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and kill... I have to kill one of these Saboteurs. I have to kill one of these Saboteurs. There's no way I can let them attack. We still take 6 next turn. Then we play Trapper and then Combat Kick, I guess. This thing is Fortune. Still think that Trapper is correct, right? He probably, he's, gonna, he's gonna make the opponent not attack with Misfortune. Okay, well, they still attack with Misfortune, so I'll take that. But we have a chance here of high rolling the, high rolling the one drop. Otherwise, I think we just go Ash. Although combat cook is probably better. We could also go, go Hookmaster and then also Glory Seeker. Hmm. Um, this protects me against like make it lane and stuff. Keep up, keep up. Yeah, perfect. So now we can go here. The and just kill this kill. sap. I guess we don't have to kill the sap. I think I'm gonna go here. Because we can just call and strike that sap, right? So she's not really pushing damage. We have the blocker for here. There we go. We draw our jetty. So we play jetty. While still having cone strike mana if we need to. Okay. So we can cone strike one of these and we just take two. Opponent has opponent, opponent probably plays flock. My list of misfortune does play flock. So there's a good chance they're also playing flop. Calling strike. Alright. We probably need to keep the calling strike though to be able to deal with Swain and Levy, right? Calling strike plus flash freeze. What else can I do here? It has to be Ash now, right? I have to try to level up Ash. I have to try to level up Ash. Opponent misses the misses the make it rain. I guess they could have a flock. So they're gonna have flock here. And that's what they're gonna do. Block on the ash. Who have fervor? So fervor here, flocks on the ash. Yep. Those into the fervor. We can flash freeze the sap. Swain is not leveled up, so we can also flash freeze the swain if anything. We push some damage. Yeah, so we can flash freeze the swain. Meaning that we're taking two from the sap. If the opponent also has a Leviathan right now, then there's literally no way for us to win. Well, that's not true anymore, right? Because now we can go like this. And we can Colin Strike the Swain so that we don't get stunned. No! No way! No way! No way! No way you do that! There's no way you do that! Wow! They did not play around the second calling strike. Wow! That's so greedy! You cannot do that! 
that's uh, we got the scout which is probably the best skill we can get there so we go here get our four damage opponent either has to block or take four okay so opponent lives at nine okay so they get another fervor here or they potentially get a flock the flock is annoying does they make it rain we can go here that way we keep it alive and we just so that the opponent doesn't have make uh, doesn't have a flock they have to block they have to block with the sap so they lose the sap they lose the sap regardless gets the fault against the fervor if they get levy or savager okay so we still have four we still have four so opponent's looking for swain right has to be swain here I can't believe they committed double fervor like that. And Swain is not enough anymore. And if they attack with the Saboteur, they don't have a I mean, they already use all three fervors. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> I actually cannot believe that that happened. So we actually do have to open attack with both because if the opponent draws an Anaka Boros, they get a blocker. So we always attack with both instead of just one. So that we play around the Iron Akaboros, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that Colin Strike that saved the game. GG's. In this matchup, we're going against Lee Sin Nami. This is Owen that we're going against, huh? Okay. I don't hate this hand. I don't hate this hand, especially now that the dynamic doesn't buff health. This Spirit Steel seems like premium in this economy, right? LeBlanc Combat Cook, Hookmaster. It's a nice curve to put a lot of pressure. We even have the Unforgiving Colin Ego, which is going to allow us to be able to stop Lee Sin from doing Lee Sin things. Unfortunately, your opponent gets Disciple right away. A little bit annoying. I don't think that's worth the Spirit Steel, so I think I let it go. If I get Scout here, that would be like the best thing ever. We don't get it, so I'm gonna just take the pot of pain. Just give myself extra health. We'll go ahead and slam the blank. If the opponent has the heavy metal, they have it. Double trouble? Okay, double trouble is not bad for me. Let's go ahead and go like this. Opponent doesn't have any good blockers. Okay, cool. And we, we start working on the blank level up. Now, I do need to continue putting pressure. So that's where this combat hook and this curve comes in. Just to continue putting pressure after pressure after pressure. We have enough freezes that are not really scared of uh, the Nami. Well, I mean, I guess I am, but not that scared. Yeah, we'll go here. That's the scout that I was looking for. So we can always transfer the scout over to the blank if, if this thing dies. And the scout by itself is also putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. Unfortunately, it does mean that we don't get, um, we don't get the reputation trigger here. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. What if we just commit British Steel here? What if we just commit the British Steel here, just so that we keep our unit alive? Play the second combat hook. LeBlanc is going to level up, and we're going to have Tactician enable. Well, we're not going to have Tactician enable, sorry. But we will be at 3 out of 5 from it. But it has to play something more defensive here. Question is, do I commit the second combat hook and potentially give the? You know, I'm gonna commit it. The fearsome seems like the best one. Opponent doesn't have a lot of fearsome blockers, so this levels up the the blank, and then that hits another 15 right away. So this levels up the blank because he's dealing the three damage that she needs, and then we go like this, and we're fine. This is two out of three on our tactician. Next time we'll have tactician enable and have the mana to play it and then also have access to the mirror image. Opponent could technically have access to a homecoming here. So Telstone plus homecoming. But notice how much I'm taking out of them by doing that. It's funny that he's, that Owen is considering not blocking with the cultists. It means that they're actually trying to push damage with the fact that they have the equipment, right? So... 
Because this deals one damage every time that it allies no, with an equipment. Hmm. This has to be a homecoming. There's nothing else that makes Not sense if you're keeping this much mana. So maybe to play around homecoming, if we kept the mana for the sigil for the sigil of malice, that would have been better. But I don't think I'm I don't think I'm ever playing the sigil of malice. Oh, it's Wuju style. Doesn't that mean I was gonna say if you do that, doesn't that mean I just transfer the equipment to another unit? I can still do that though, right? I can still transfer the scout to the blank. So I can still transfer the scout to the blank. Which is huge because she has quick attack. So I can still transfer the scout to the blank by pulling the sap, the amulet here, and kind of going from there. Unfortunately, your opponent just keeps getting so much draws. They have so many cards. They have so many cards. But this is going to always stop Lee Sane from doing anything. But as I say that, do I really want him not to do anything? So, we go like this, transfer that over. We can scout next turn, but then the opponent will have the Lee Sane barrier to kind of block our LeBlanc. Meaning that we would have to commit the freeze. I guess we can play. We can start with the sigil of malice, but opponent could easily have deny on that. They have to pull. They have to pull the blank. That's huge. That's huge. That is actually huge. I like the flash freeze. I like the flash freeze to start with. Opponent could have momentous choice, and that will actually allow him to do it. And the reason that I like the, the flash freeze is because he lets me just transfer the scout right away. The downside to this is that opponent easily has barrier. Okay, we get we draw another one, so we draw another flash freeze, and then we also have unforgiving call. This is gonna have to wait for next turn. Stun. Okay. Stun is kind of big. Stun is kind of big. We still do need to attack with everything, just so that we can play the Tactician. And trigger our reputation. The problem here is that the opponent, if the opponent actually block correctly, and get the barrier in the least sin, they stop the reputation from actually triggering. So I'm surprised he didn't go for it that way. So, let's say that we do the Rally here. Right? Let's say that we do the rally here. Then stop the heart. We attack with everything. And we have the sigil of malice to pop the barrier. Meaning that the opponent's listen will die. Or at the very least we beat something out of them. If the opponent doesn't kill this, this is gonna reduce this to zero and we can replay a second tactician. So this is great, right? Because if opponent blocks like if opponent blocks the tactician or one of these units, we can always signal malice to pop the spell shield at uh, the barrier. Opponent's gonna have to have nullify. Opponent's gonna have to have nullify. And even when they do, like the nullify is the only thing that stops this, because otherwise we hit for ten, enabling the mirror image on the tactician again. The other option that. Owen has is actually blocking with the Lee Sin here and buffing up the Lee Sin to be able to kill the tactician. And that still gives him enough mana for. No kills, that still gives him enough mana for the Nopify. Now, I think I don't play around the Nopify. I think if they, if they have the Nopify, they have it. I think I'd rather just try to kill the Lee Sin. Because even if he doesn't kill it, like, he has to be exactly not provide. If it's like a Wuju style or a Momentous choice, this counts as 5 damage now, because the opponent won't have the barrier. And it will enable our mirror image to cost 0. Yeah, so, there you go. So now our, mir now our mirror image costs 0, we play a Tactician, and now our opponent is still going to have to lose their Lee Sin, as well as losing the Disciple. There we go. We play this here, we get the rally again, 
I guess technically opponent doesn't have to lose Lee Sin, they can just lose the Disciple and then play for the Lee Sin win condition. I guess that's an option. Yeah, I guess they're gonna go for it that way. But we have enough mana for the Unforgiving Call to punish anything else after this. Opponent goes down to three, doesn't have a Nami enable. They can bounce back my units. They can bounce back, bounce back my LeBlanc, right? Is there a way for them to have OTK me here? There isn't, right? We go here, freeze, play LeBlanc again, play the scout on her again, and go from there. Do we even play the scout, to be honest? Do we even bother playing the scout? A pedal for the thorn. Hmm. Cause, okay, well, the problem here is like all of this is not doing much because opponent can easily just freeze. So we have nine mana next turn. I mean, so opponent can easily just barrier Lee Sin, which will stop our LeBlanc from actually pushing damage. So opponent's gonna get barrier next turn. I think we actually don't have a way to win this unless we draw Ash. So we don't have a way to win this unless we draw the Ash. With opponent having all this access to all these cards. Okay, that's a that's a great way to do it. That's a great way to do it. Because now we can go for the rake. Play this. So that Lee Sin can not kill LeBlanc, right? Opponent could have... I mean, we can also just go to the Unforgiving Call. Because we will get... By doing the Unforgiving Call, it's kind of the same thing. We just need to hit this twice. I think we go here first. I think we go here first. Force the opponent on committing the spells on the Lee Sin. Because if I get another Mirror Image, that also works. To be able to get the Rally. I don't have to actually commit the Tactician. Okay, so opponent has to commit two spells to get the barrier. We freeze the Lee Sin. This will not count for LeBlanc's mirror image. So we will have to then commit the archer or commit an equipment on any one of these units, which is probably better to commit the equipment of the tactician. Unless the opponent plays for the homecoming here. Doesn't do it. So we Unforgiving Call. It doesn't count though, but now the barrier is popped and opponent cannot get barrier anymore. That was what, their second Tailstones? Would you style? I'm willing to commit the second Unforgiving, or the second win. Is that true? If we commit the second win here, I think we have to. If we commit the second Unforgiving Call here, I think we have to. It doesn't work. It doesn't work twice because you already got affected. Ah, okay. That's a good lesson to learn. So it doesn't work twice on the same unit. Even though it was back up to being the strongest unit. Wow, okay. That's a good lesson to be learned. Huh. So the Unforgiving Call doesn't work twice, even though regular Freeze will have. Wow, that actually might just last us the game. I mean, I think we're still losing anyway. So, opponent, again, opponent just has too much value. So, I think we're still losing anyways, but that feels bad. That feels really bad. That feels really bad, because now Lee Sin can just OTK us. Yeah, opponent gets have to have a full hand. Wow. Are you kidding me? Why doesn't that work? This is the highest pack attack unit that the opponent has. And now they get Nami, so no matter what, they're gonna get to both of their units. That's so annoying. That, like, actually so annoying. Cool. Again, it's not gonna matter, because this just gets buffed up now by the Nami spells. But maybe it can stop an OTK by reducing 3 damage. 
Really unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. I mean, lessons are learned, right? That That's what my videos are for, to be educational. And we just learned a lesson today, today that the info given doesn't work twice in the same unit. So, yeah, that's very good to know. Let's just rally. I mean, I don't really have anything else to do. Don't really have anything else to do here. Opponent doesn't even need to use two spells. So they still have the barrier to stop to pop everything. So... Yeah, GG's. I mean, that feels bad. That feels bad. I wish... I wish there was somewhere that Riot would say that, right? That it doesn't work in the same unit twice, but GG's. In this match, we're going against Seraphim Big Bear. So, another Seraphim deck means really bad news for us. Seraphim is probably one of our worst matchups with Ash LeBlanc. I like the Trapper, the Pusing Aggression. I like the Glory Seeker, but opponent obviously has access to Freeze and PNC stuff. So no matter what, it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Gets the he gets the acorn in turn one, so whatever they're gonna have is gonna be discounted even more. Okay, whatever. You know what? I'm just gonna play on curve. If you have whatever whatever you have, you have it. Whatever you have, you have it. I'm just gonna play on curve. Just it is what it is. We'll go ahead and play the LeBlanc. Just try to level up LeBlanc. You have a Mystic, you have a uh, Shock Blast, do it. Mine. Have a mystical shock let's just do it. Just do your thing. Why are you why are you doing why are you doing the emotes? I'm gonna mute you. <laughs> okay, so he's playing a Starlight Seer deck. Interesting. If you don't kill this, I guess I'm gonna have Troll Shen enable for the uh LeBlanc to keep her alive. So I think I like it that they have Trapper and then Troll Shen to keep LeBlanc alive. What if we just... What if we just do this? I like doing it like this so that I don't lose to a Mystic Shot. I know I could have stopped the Acorn from hitting, but I think it's fine. Yeah. Opponent's gonna get a really big unit, right? This level sub LeBlanc as well. Which is kinda nice. Could have stopped the Acorn from hitting. But I don't think that's correct. Opponents, opponents, opponents would like to play all the spells at once. They decided to keep their seer, seer alive instead of the acorn. So they don't have any Sitzka spell that they rather play instead. Interesting. Maybe they're looking to kill the blank here. Which, if they have like enough buffs, they could. Okay, no, decides to just push two instead. So it doesn't have the way to kill LeBlanc. So LeBlanc will level up regardless. They're just trying to get as many buffs as they can in their next big unit. Now we do have the freezes. And then they predict that away? Wait, you just predicted your unit away. Whatever unit that was, you just predicted it away. What? What? Oh, no way, that's correct, right? I'm gonna play here for the potential of us getting the Jetty right away. One out, of, one out of three. If we get the Jetty right away, then we're chilling. There we go. We're good gamers like that. So we get Jetty. Then we play Ash. Let's wait to see what the opponent does. I'm okay. I'm not okay playing this Ash like that and losing to like a... Okay, yeah, I'm chilling. Okay, so he ended up getting the assembly bot anyways, I guess. Yeah, he got the assembly. So he literally predicted and he still got the assembly bot. Okay, so this will trigger again at 15. So I guess let's go like this. Right? That way we get this to this count to 1. And the trapper puts her back to 3. I think not killing Ash is a mistake. Okay, we have the freezes. We have the freezes. Assembly bot doesn't have overwhelm, so it just gets blocked. The freezes allow me to just level up the ash. Can we just like not do anything here? Can we just like chill? 
Shaman's Call? Yeah, so he's gonna go for the Overwhelm. They're gonna go for the Overwhelm. And what is that gonna do? Unfortunately, it's a bad matchup for them. You know what? Let me unmute him now. See what he's saying. Uh, let's give him... Let's give him one of these when I put my archer. <laughs> Cool. Two beans. So we go here. Ash is now a three out of four. Let's go here. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, man, emotes are like the one way I get tilted. I'm not gonna lie. Regen. Yeah, big whoop. Your unit's not gonna be able to block because we'll have the we'll have we'll be able to just attack with Ash. No, 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 you can't do that. Ah, he actually thought he could attack. So they made it even easier for me. So <laughs> yeah, you can't attack. GG's. In this matchup, we're going against Bane. Bane Gwen, and this is exactly the matchup they were looking for when we're playing Ash, uh, because opponents can have a really hard time kind of dealing with this stuff, right? The skirmish is not bad. I feel like our hand is a little bit awkward, though. I feel like I'm going to go for the LeBlanc, but not for the skirmish. Okay, we have the Hookmaster now. Maybe the skirmish was actually correct. Hmm. Because now we're in a position where we don't have any freezes, or at least keeping one of the two units who are probably been better. And Brewer still is kind of big. Brewer still is kind of big. Combat reel? I like the combat reel. I like the combat reel to get the extra mana because we're going to play LeBlanc here and tap out of mana, right? So we can play LeBlanc. We have, we're going to have access to the Hookmaster. I guess we I guess we can attack with it, all right? If we attack with it, they're putting just blocks with the ban. Yeah, if we attack with this, the opponent just blocks the band, so we're not going to get our mana out of it. Opponent could have Gwen here, and we don't really have a way to deal with Gwen right now. I guess we do now, right? We can freeze her. We can freeze the Gwen, because the opponent only has one Hollow Death, so at most it's only going to go up to one attack. And then she will die to the Blanc. Yeah, so we can go here. If opponent decides to attack, I guess they could have like a ping to kill LeBlanc. So I do have to really be careful about that. Otherwise, I think I'm chilling. Lining Assault? Gets punished by the right by the Builder Steel? Ah, he's gonna get a second Ghastly Band. That's why he's doing it this way. So is it ever better to actually play the Sigil of Malice? To stop the opponent from getting a second Ghastly Band? I don't think so, right? Because I think I want to just play the Glory Seeker and just open attack on the Gwen. This still gives me the plus 5 with the LeBlanc too, so we're chilling. We are going to take, you know, 3 damage, but I mean, the is losing most of that stuff, and then LeBlanc is going to be leveled up, and we're also going to trigger Reputation while still killing the Gwen. Yeah, I think we just take the 5. So here we just need 5 more to level up LeBlanc. So we can level up LeBlanc by pulling with the Glory Seeker. And just in case that that's not enough, I guess we can go like this. And now we have access to the Unforgiving Call, which is literally what I was looking for. And now we're chilling. Oh, perfect. Maybe we actually need to draw and get the two draw first. But then I think we're risking ourselves losing to like some other random nonsense. This LeBlanc is going to get pretty crazy. We still hit the reputation, so we still have the Whisper Words too, which helps us out. Opponents at 8 HP and the Unforgiving Call, which is already enabled because of the Hookmaster. It's going to stop any attack that they might have later into the game. The mirror image is a little bit three away, so we can always block with the Ice Bear Archer, and that will get us a mirror image. And if we get the, if we get the uh, tactician here, then we're also kind of chilling. 
So we go like this. We have Troll Shen. Skirmish is not bad. So Skirmish is actually so good because it can kill the combat cook, right? Because he gets rid of the equipment first. Hmm. Huh. Unfortunately, we like we kind of have like an upward hand where we actually don't have a lot of our five draw, a lot of our five power units to actually be able to attack. So it can be a little bit awkward, technically. Who does not know the name Laurent? Are we drawing here? I don't think so, right? Seems a little bit trolly. We have the Unforgiving Call, which will enable us and allow us to just trade with everything that the opponent does. We could also just replay LeBlanc, or we could just play Troll Shen, right? We don't have to play the Unforgiving Call just yet. I think I like the Troll Shen. Unless the opponent goes like this. I mean, the Troll Shen is not going to save me because the opponent has four Hollow Death, so it has to be Unforgiving Call. Is it worth it using the Unforgiving Call this early? I think so. Let's go here. And this is gonna make a mirror image? Yeah, the opponent, opponent just kinda gets stuck here. The freeze is just too good. The freezes are too good against any Bane deck, and I think opponent realized that. Uh, if you wanna be Bane, this is the deck. So, GG's. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those games. Uh, you can see what I mean, right? We we lost that game against Seraphine pretty badly. We learned a lesson in that game against Owen where we lost against Lee Sin. I didn't know that, but yeah, Unforgiving Call doesn't affect the same unit twice. So that's good to know because that actually does matter in that Lee Sin matchup or other similar matchups. So good good to know there. Uh, all the matchups were straightforward. As you see what I meant in the beginning of the video, we kind of went against some weird off-meta decks today, even Jetties out there. But it still was fun, so showcase that we did get that one game against Bane, and you kind of see how useless Bane feels against this deck right here. In terms of Mulligan, I'm definitely looking to keep the Hookmaster, right? And I'm looking to keep the Trapper, and then I'm looking to keep my Champions, at least one Ash and definitely one LeBlanc. Those are literally the four units that I'm looking for the most. Hookmaster, Trapper, LeBlanc, and Ash. The rest of my hand can kind of go away. I will keep the Glory Seeker if I feel like I do have a key unit that I need to kill right away and if the opponent doesn't have a great way to deal with glory seeker but almost every deck has a one damage thing that can deal with the glory seeker so again just kind of focus on your champions instead and the hook master so that you can always have the unforgiving call enable in case that you need it and the trapper so that you can get the enriched yeti that puts a lot of pressure on the opponent so yeah enough about that hope you liked today's games and if you did make sure to like this video below and subscribe to us it helps us out a lot you can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Story Tournament, where we stream two, three times a week. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.